Happy Sunday. How you doing? I turn on my fucking TV and look what's on. What is it about these old shows? I go out and I spend all this money on a 70-inch 4K smart TV. But all the old programming they show, like shows from the 70s, I guess the way they're formatted, it doesn't fill out the screen. Gee, I wonder why. Anyway, looks like we will get our ride in today. Uh, in about an hour, hour and a half, I'll be heading up to Hyannis. I hear headquarters a little further down on the Cape. We're going to hit the road for a while. Uh, here in New England, man, the weather can change from hour to hour. The rain they were expecting to move in, it came in earlier. In fact, when we left Knuckleheads uh, last night, it was already starting to rain. It stopped around 4 o'clock this morning. I got up at 5 as usual. Just a little drizzle. It's already completely stopped. And, uh... A little cloudy overcast, but no more rain today, so that's good. However, we have been caught in the rain before. An hour or two out, man, all of a sudden, bang, it fucking rains. So, hey, what the fuck? It won't kill us. So. Oh, by the way, Mike. Uh, I told Dave Stefanski last night that you think Pollocks are dumb. He said he would love to have you say that to his face. Just figured I'd let you know. He would really like to meet you. Uh, actually, so would I. <laughs> uh, you know, this reminded me of something. I guess Sanford's been kind of happy. I haven't been getting on his sorry ass lately. Because I've been getting on this other fucking lunatic sorry ass. Oh, but I did get to Sanford the other day, right? about how he thinks he knows how to run a new car dealership, you know, what kind of cars they should have on their lot, how they should run their business to remain in business, sell cars, make a profit, stay in business. And I guess he thinks they don't know what they're doing. You know, they shouldn't have used cars on their lot. Anyway, I went through that already. But this reminded me of something. How many of you have seen a car that... Uh, it's not really that great, but somebody's got it sitting in their yard with a sign not for sale. But somebody could come along. It might be, you know, a Nova, something two doors called a Nova. Even a regular Le Mans, you don't have to be a GTO. Regular Malibu Chevelle. You know, a Duster, even a Belvedere. You know, two-door car in that two-door. Something that at least has a little bit of a, a cool car factor to it. You know what I mean? It's not a four-door junk, it's a two-door junk, but still it has two doors. And you can still get them to look good. You can dress up a Belvedere, you know, to look as good as a GTX. You can dress up, you know, a satellite. You can dress up a base Nova, Camaro, you know, Chevelle, base Mustang Grande. You know, it ain't going to be a Mach 1, but it'll still look cool. You get good paint on it. It runs good. A few little dress-up pieces, nice wheels. You know, still a cool car, man. Nothing wrong with it. And you might come across one of these in a sign, not for sale. Ask them why. Come on, tell me. You know I. You know what I'm going to say. I know what you're going to say. Oh, it's not for sale. I'm going to fix it up one day. And you go, yeah, okay. Then you go by years later and the fucking thing is still sitting there, hasn't been touched. And this relates back to Morris Sanford's wisdom philosophy. He preaches to his pickle sniffers. According to Sanford, and he said that he said this himself, because at one time he was getting pressured, hey, uh, what happened to this project? What happened to that project? You haven't touched it in a year. Sanford's reasoning is, and I, I think this is his way of making an excuse for himself. According to Sanford, came from his own mouth. Or oh, a project is not supposed to be finished. Because once you finish it, it's no longer a project. So, you're not supposed to finish a project. When you start a project, you should have no expectation, no plan to finish the project. You dibble and dabble with it, put it aside for a few years... You know, put it aside for a few years, ignore it, go on to another project. You should always be starting a new project without completing the previous project. So you're always wrapped up in projects and none of them get done. And I remember Sanford saying that one time, well, you know, it's hard for me to get anything done because I have too many projects. And none of them got done. True. He got some things done, but they never lived up to the claim of the project he made. Hey, Baby Bottle Rocket never ran that 10 and never will. You know, playing nine from outer space. Never ran that 11 like he said it would with that killer slant six. It ended up in a junkyard, didn't it? Didn't it? He pulled the engine, fucking scrapped it. 
Mazda Miata. Oh, yeah, he got that slant six in it and never got to that autocross event. Yeah, like that thing was going to pass safety tech with a wooden transmission tunnel and a wooden firewall. Yeah, right. That ended up in a fucking crusher at a scrapyard, too. You know what I mean? There's a Jeep four-liter engine build, all his other engine builds. Never got done. There were projects. There were projects. He knew when he laid out these projects. But then again, his reasoning is just fucking content. Content get used to make money. Because let's face it, this guy couldn't hold a fucking job at a Goodyear Firestone service center for a week. He'd get shit canned. Laziness, sloppiness, incompetence. You know what I mean? That's why he's going to try to make a living on YouTube. Because he would never make it in any reputable garage. And if he ran his own garage here where he actually did customer work... <laughs> the word of mouth on him Besides the cars being fucked up And sitting there forever Cause Oh well Oh yeah Oh he came in for a tuna Oh uh I'll get to it tomorrow Uh I'm making a video today To put up on YouTube Uh I'll get to your car tomorrow You know what I mean I don't think he would do well If he ran a real fucking garage That he's never run in his fucking life The only thing he ran You know it was a coffee shop that failed A hookah bar that failed a magazine that failed, and his uh, junk flipping and potting out and Vintag swapping and title forging operation. It's the only thing he's been involved in in cars. And then, you know, he never even owned a fucking regular garage with a couple of lifts and a couple of fucking gas pumps out front. You know what I mean? Nothing. Never. Never. But, hey, he is what he is. Let him talk. That's what I say. Let him talk. Let him talk and have a good fucking laugh at his expense. That's what I do. And it's fun. But yeah, you know, uh, hey, what happened with, uh, you see, now I'm being reminded here. What happened to us? Is he still hanging around with Kiwi? Has Kiwi been around lately? I know, you know, he ain't bothering with Dallas and even, uh, you know, Big Wilbur and, you know, a lot of them all, all the way down the line. Uh, what happened to his buddy there, Super Ron Osborne, the body man, remember that? He fixed a quarter on that charger. And then he was going to get to another project of Sanford's. The MC Hammer car. He was going to get all the mashed. That's what Sanford called it. Al did a terrible job on the body. It looks like mashed potatoes. It's lumpy with the body work. His buddy Super Ron Osborne, the super body man, was going to fix all that. That project was he was going to get metal flake paint on it and make it look like a real, you know, 60s, 70s style. You know, gasser. Whatever happened with that? I guess that project's not going to get completed either. You know, he gets little things done, and even then, he doesn't even do it. If he can get other people to do it for him, you know, if Al hadn't done the body on that thing, that thing would be sitting there. All Sanford got his hands into was the engine, and we know what's been going on with that fucking thing with all its problems. You know what I mean? Why? Because he fucking built it. That's why. I rest my case. Next on the docket. You know, is he even still talking, is that Super Ron Osborne guy still even talking to him? Or did he realize Sanford was just fucking using him for content? He said, fuck you, pal. Which I wouldn't blame him. <coughs> oh, and the power tour didn't happen, right? Yeah. I heard last minute too. Oh, the charge. Oh, I got all these problems. Gee, I've had this for 10 years and never had any problems. And now that, yeah, now that he wants to, you know, take it on a power tour, he's got all kinds of electrical problems and this don't work, that don't work. He didn't drive the fucking thing for 10 years. So, of course, that thing always had these problems. They just didn't pop up. Magically appear. <coughs> he even said at one time, the car was in a flood. Submerged in water. You know what water does? Electronics and wiring and connectors and harnesses. It fucks shit up, you know? <laughs> and, uh... He would say, no, the whole dash didn't work, no gauges, no horn, no nothing, no nothing worked. But he didn't care because he had a dash from a car in it stored away somewhere from some car he potted out. He was just going to swap out the whole dash, you know, and this and that. But he was so proud of himself because he got one of the headlights to flip up in the front. He was showed off. Hey, look, I fixed the headlight. <coughs> I feel like I'm coming out with a fucking cold again, man. This sucks. Uh... And then suddenly, oh, I can't go to the power tour. I got too many problems with it. You know what I mean? That was another project, too. So when it comes to projects, I know you've heard it. You know, there was a guy here. When I came back from Arizona, when I was there for three years, there was a guy here. 
and it caught my eye because I'm a Pontiac guy. He had a unibody, just a unibody. No glass, no interior, no nothing, just a unibody. No front subframe, no front fenders, no hood, no bumpers. It did have a trunk lid sitting on the ground. It was a 69 Le Mans Tempest GTO, one of them. They were all the same body style. And I knew it was a 69 because the difference between a 68 and 69, 68, which I actually liked better than the 69 GTO, the rear bumper, the taillights were on the lower part of the bumper, completely recessed in the bumper. I liked that. 69, they moved them up to the top half of the bumper, and they rose a little above the bumper where it went into the trunk lid line. So the trunk lid had little indentations on the end, so when you close the trunk, it kind of went around the tail lights, whereas the 68 didn't. You had a straight line trunk lid in the back. So I knew it was a 69. No badging, no nothing. It was completely rusted, but it didn't have a whole lot of raw on it. It was actually in pretty good shape for someone that just wanted, you know, a unibody, you know. Uh, he had a sign on it, not for sale. Because I'm a Pontiac guy. I saw him outside or something. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey, sorry to bother you. Uh, what is this? GTO of mine? You know, I asked him. Oh, it's a 69 Judge. No, you couldn't tell. No badging. You couldn't even see what color the paint originally was. Even the inside was rusted. Inside and out, it was rusted. I don't know how long it had been sitting around. I said, oh, yeah. He says, uh, yeah, uh, I've had people offer to buy it off me, but I don't want to sell it. That's why he's got a sign, not for sale. You know? I'm going to fix it up one day. Well, you know, it's nine years later, that fucking thing is still sitting there. You know, project cars, like I said, how many project cars have you seen, you know, in people's yards, not for sale, not for sale, years go by, that fucking thing is still there. You know what I mean? These guys are not restorers. They're not car builders. They're not projects. It's just junk. They are junk hoarders. For some reason, they can't part with their junk. They need to know that their junk is out there so they can look at it anytime they want. And their project will never be completed. In most cases... These project car guys, they never even start their fucking projects. Anyway, have a great Sunday. Have fun, stay safe. We're going to get to hit the road after all. And I'll catch up with you tomorrow.